video, we go behind the scenes with the experts and show you what it takes to properly prep a track from start to finish for the best racing surface for radial tyres. With all the pro tips and techniques to do it right, we'll show you what you need to do to give your cars the best chance of running those numbers. I'm Justin Simpson and I own the IDRP group, which formerly owns Kenda Tyres. Some guys may be aware of that series. It's pretty much the premier radial series on the east coast of Australia currently. And um, yeah, I'm here this weekend to give you guys a hand and hopefully uh, get you boys down the track. Lorenzo's invited me. Mad props to Lorenzo, so thanks mate. Um, name's Lorenzo Galato. I've been racing for quite a while now. Um, step my way up through Super Street all the way up to uh, around Top Sports and for a little bit and then obviously started going down this radial path and um, bits and pieces so radial is kind of my thing at the moment which, which I really enjoy. My background is I'm a fitter and turner by trade and also did mechanic. I actually own Horsepower Solutions in Brisbane and a uh, great mate of mine Scotty Harker and I started the series called Kenda and um, it's some 13 years old now and it's usual for us to give over 35 to 40 grand per round away and that's uh, four times a year on the east coast so between Sydney and Brisbane and Willowbank currently and um, the series has grown and we've got major sponsors, we've got minor sponsors and yeah it's uh, obviously outgrown what we thought was a bit of fun that's for sure. So we met, met Justin um, I think it was back in 2000 13 or 14 at a Kenda event in Queensland. Um, we travelled over there with just a few few mates of ours just to go just to go watch the event and um, met Justin and Scott back then and then just turned into I think the year after we uh, made of ours raced over there and we all went over and raced there and then um, just kept growing from there and then the first event I ran with Kenda was 2019 in um, the VL Commodore um, in Outlaw 275 and then just continue to grow from there and obviously done a few events and bits and pieces, did two events last year with him and um, yeah and just always had a good friendship with him and him and Scott as well so and just continue to talk so that's how that's how I met him. Coming across the other side of Australia is always going to be risky. I've never actually been to Perth Motorplex. This place is beautiful, there, there's no doubt about it. It's a beautiful facility. The grounds and that, you know, it's, it's really, really nice. It's probably the best I've seen in Australia. The track side of things, you know, I can tell you guys are starved the radial stuff over here. It's, it's clear by the track surface. And we had our work cut out for us Wednesday, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty sore. Um, we needed to scrape it. It was very plastically like, um, which is fine for a slick prep style track, but you know, as you probably will see in footage that you've got from the great footage over the weekend, you'll see how much work goes into a radial prep deal. The Motorplex drag strip is concrete for around 116 metres or 370 foot from the start line, followed by bitumen all the way to the very end of the track, one kilometre or 3200 foot long. 
we scraped about 80 metres of the left lane, which was chosen to be the dedicated rail-tired car lane, and about 30 metres of the right lane for the slick cars at the track hire. The scrapers, designed by Justin and built by Lorenzo, were used in conjunction with liquid petroleum gas torches, which can heat the track surface to 1100 degrees Celsius or 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The torches have the primary function of softening the rubber buildup so that it can be scraped back using the scrapers. We concentrated on around 5 metre sections at a time, scraping each in two passes due to the thickness of the rubber built up over the years. With two torches and two scrapers going, it took us about 25 minutes to do each section. So when we get to most tracks, the surface, you never know what you're going in for. So it's, it's safest to scrape the surface, but it's also risky. Um, and last night, you'll see that a couple of boys struggled a little bit, and that's just because it hasn't had enough traffic. So we always go in first, we assess the, the platform that we've got and the surface, and then we decide, okay, we're gonna light scrape it or it needs to be pulled right back. In this case here, it needs to be pulled right back. Um, it's had years and years of rubber on it, especially past the 60 foot where, where the boys are trying to put power in. So we do that, obviously, and that gives us a, a clean slate. I, I refer to it as like painting a car. So you've got to rub all the old stuff off first, and then you've got, you know, your surfaces you're starting with. So we obviously scrape as far as our bodies can handle. There are some machinery now that we have on this because it makes it a lot easier. Um, but yeah, you'll see we, we hand scrape here and it's, it's hard yakka. Um, but what it does is it just gives you that, that clean surface to start with and then you build layer upon layer. Look, it was a risk. I didn't know what we are coming in for. Um, brand new rotator, I, I broke that in for the guys here. Um, hopefully they, you know, continue to use that piece of equipment. So, yeah, look, I'm hoping that um, the boys have fun and definitely get the drip in the arm for the radio boys over here, that's for sure. Perth Motorplex organised a rotator, I think it was about 18 months, two years ago, I think it was, when they ordered it. Um, obviously, it took a little while to get here, but it did arrive, I think, about three weeks before this event was going to happen. Um, and obviously, speaking to Sharpie and all that, we wanted to be the, you know, we, we really wanted to use it for this for this event, obviously, to make sure we had the prep right and all that. And, and obviously, not having an unlimited amount of time here, only had three, you know, two days prior to the event to actually scrape and prep and stuff like that. So obviously, the rotator helps a lot with that side of things. So. Um, but yeah, it, it arrived, um, Sharpie sent, to, sent me some photos of it and that was all good. Um, obviously we arrived at the track and a lot of stuff hadn't been done with it. Um, I think all it had done was unpacked off the crate that it came in, still had old tyres on it, bits and pieces. Um, we arrived at the track to find out that they didn't have a PTO drive shaft to drive the actual rotator, which was a bit of a kick in the guts. Um, and being told that I think it was about three week wait or yeah three weeks to get it here or something like that but it's a PTO shaft WA is a pretty big farming farming state and stuff like that so there's got to be stuff around so um, myself jumped on the phone started ringing around a couple of places ended up finding one um, in Malaga in Perth and all that and then they had Brendan pick it up from Because Race Cars who was down there helping us out um, and then yeah got that there got it cut got the um, Perth Motor Plex crew to go get some tyres changed over, they had some tyres there and stuff like that and then got it all working, cut the shaft down, made it all fit up to the tractor, new tyres on it, got all that working, got it fitted and then yeah so it was it was a bit of a bit of a hard day getting it all working and sorted out and Justin had to work out gear ratios and stuff like that to make the tractor do what it had to do and stuff like that so it was a bit of a task but in the end of the day we got it done and it worked, it did what it had to do and all I can see is the Perth Motorplex benefited from what we did on the day.
once you scrape it, obviously then you need to light glue it. And then the rotator and the sled do their jobs to put the surface down for the boys. And then it's pretty much just repeat. It's, it's rub, spray, rub, spray through the meeting. The more traffic, you know, the, when the tracks are dry like they are here, obviously three or four cars will start pulling the glue off the start line, so it's judging how much to glue, but you can't over glue. Um, that's very important. If you over glue, uh, it's very hard to get it back. So it's very important just to go a little bit at a time and build it over a few days. And that's, you know, for, the guys in America are so fortunate because their radial meets are five, six days long. So, you know, by the third or fourth day, those guys are having to scrape the surface again because there's so much build up. So, that's how it goes, it's scrape, and then we just start building the layers from there. That's exactly what happens at a radial meet, and then just maintain it meticulously throughout the meeting. purpose-built rotator works by laying down a rubber base on a freshly scraped surface. The rotator is set up with a similar combo to what you'd find on one of the cars, with a 9-inch diff and heavy-duty gearing, full spool and heavy-duty axles. They come in many configurations, but ours were set up with four full-size 34 and a half inch drag slicks and work by a large cog and chain which are driven off the tractor PTO. The mounted tyres are rotated slowly in the opposite direction to the tractor travel and essentially colour in the track. Monitoring and ensuring the correct tyre pressures gives an even coverage across all tyres and overlapping each pass lays down a consistent rubber base. Line-driven, 
to ensure adequate overlap on each pass can change depending on the tractor's wheel track distance. The temperature of the tyres are checked periodically and the tyres are cooled down with water to ensure they remain within an intended range and don't overheat. over 660 litres of VHT track glue over the three days, or around four 44 gallon drums. This combination of additives, also known as Justin's secret sauce, is applied to the full 400 metres or 1320 foot length of the race surface, only overlapping the edge of the previous pass. 
As Justin mentioned, an important part of the process is not to overglue the surface, but also to let the glue dry sufficiently before any cars go down. The weighted sled is rigged with four drag slick tyres that Justin has specially cut near the sidewalls to ensure they remain completely flat and have as much contact with the track surface as possible. The sled drags a layer of rubber evenly across the surface, smoothing out and filling in the imperfections and voids. Large imperfections and pitting in the surface are a potential point of failure for water ingress and can cause the rubber to peel off the surface which is what our track suffered with in the hot summer with track temperatures in excess of 65 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So the main reason for me to go, to get Justin involved with uh, prep at the Perth Motorplex was, um, I feel that we were struggling the last few years with prep in Perth, and um, not just radial side, I think all over. And the whole thing I wanted to do was put on an event or a track eye that um, the WA radial guys could experience what I've experienced over the Eastern States when I've raced over there, um, obviously, we struggled here for a few years in my new car in the Fox body and obviously straight to Sydney we ran an event over there and the car just kicked ass and you know I mean we thought we built a dud but in the end of the day we didn't build a dud um, and I'm not saying that we don't get the good prep over here like we did get good prep over here you know that the, the track staff try their hardest to do what they do but I think sometimes it's just more of a knowledge thing from slick prep to a radial prep and um, I think the only way to really move forward with the radial side of things over in Perth was to get someone over here to to do a bit of prep over here to show that our track can be quick, you know what I mean? Like we've got a state-of-the-art state of facility over in Perth, here in Perth, and I feel that it can be a fast track. Like it can be one of the quickest in, in Australia for radial stuff. Um, obviously we don't have the radial cars like they do over east, but we do have quite a good field over here when, when, they, when we do show up and, you know, give the people the track they're gonna show. Um, so the whole point was that 
Yes, I wanted to test my car before heading back over east again, but the main thing was I wanted to put on a track for the WA guys that can't afford or you know don't have the time or whatever to make it over there to experience what can be put on for them and stuff like that and know that their car can go quick. Uh, some years ago, obviously, we, we brought tile across now over from the States. A um, few people might know tile, but very high PDRA and stuff now over there. Um, gentlemen, love the guy, we're lifelong mates. Um, Tyler came over first and um, sort of showed us some craft. And then Tyler's schedule actually got so hectic we couldn't, he wasn't available. Um, to which thankfully put us onto Kurt Johnson from Total Venue Concepts. Now, Kurt's like the grandfather of track prep worldwide, there's no doubt about it. Um, Kurt manufactures his own gear, which I actually own my own rotator on the East Coast, one of, one of Kurt's rotators. It's manufactured in Brisbane by all type, Darren Eldridge. Um, and with that gear, obviously that's the surface we can put on. So we were fortunate enough to get Kurt over and yeah, we've spent a lot of time with both Kurt and Tyler learning the craft and um, I, I don't think you ever stop learning. And the good part is that I have Kurt and Tyler pretty much when I need them. If I'm struggling with something or I just need some help or a little bit of question, I can simply send them a photo or ask them a question and those boys nine times out of ten will bounce back. So thankful for that forever in debt to those boys and um, it, th they will be over more. Well, that's, that's part of the Kenda deal, we'll always bring them over. So that's how we've, we've learnt the craft. I had to organise a few things before this event obviously went ahead. Obviously Track Eye started off with organising some test days, booking some days in with, um, with Sharpie at the Perth Motorplex, um, which is pretty, pretty easy these days. Obviously just got to find a date and hope for the weather, weather's good. Um, secondly was I did. I spoke to Justin prior to that, but obviously arranging Justin's uh, calendar as well. Obviously, he's a pretty busy guy with work and obviously track prep and stuff like that now. Um, so once I got the track arranged, Justin arranged, and obviously there's arranging, you know, flights and accommodation for Justin. Then there's a, uh, arranging all the stuff that he wants and he needs over here to do what he needs to do, um, which was including, you know, making a couple of hand scrapers, which he gave me drawings of, which I knocked out. Um, and then obviously I organised, um, you know, like blow torches and stuff so we could scrape the track, um, LPG bottles, just all that type of stuff that you need, you know, that he needs, that he wants, just to make him obviously more comfortable when he comes here and doing what he needs to do without trying to find everything and all that. Yeah, look, I'm not going to lie, I'm actually a slick guy. I, I have a no prep car um, and I figure because I do so much work on the surface, it's easier for me to just race a car where I don't have to worry about prep. Um, my background is obviously I've raced in lots of classes, super sedan, super stock, top sportsman, um, anywhere from sort of, you know, we licensed at 980, and I've been 690, 200, and you know, it's, that's the background of racing. The radial side of things, uh, I guess I refer to, it's like tuning a car, um, and that's what I do, that's what Allspare Solutions is. We build and tune race cars uh, from every level, and I guess the, the chase on the radial surface is what attracts me to try and do better, get better, learn more every time, and working out what the track needs. Does it need more rub? Does it need more glue? Is it too hot? Is it too cold? It's an addiction, that's what it is. And I guess the radial thing, that's what that's what gets me mentally is wanting to be perfect and do better every time. So that's why I like radial. Um, the slick stuff to me is pretty easy. So yeah, just, Justin's good. Like he, he doesn't hide what he does. So <clears throat> he, taught, he taught us a lot of stuff on the three days that it was here, just not just you know, not just track prep stuff, but just weather stuff like UV stuff like that with the glue and bits and pieces and glue mixtures and all that type of stuff. So he's, he is like, he is a real, real good help when it comes to that type of stuff. I learned quite a bit. Um, he showed me a lot of stuff with, you know, like obviously the rotator, um, a lot of stuff that, well, in WA, no one really knows about because we haven't seen one yet. This is the first time one's ever hit the Perth Motorplex surface. So uh, it was good to, to have Justin here, I think, to do it first, you know, after all his knowledge with it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, he, he, we, we, did a, we did quite a bit, like he showed us a lot with the sprayer, the track sprayer and stuff like that for VHT and stuff like that, like we, we made a few changes on that because it wasn't, he wasn't happy with it and stuff like that, so we did quite a bit, but yeah, I learned a lot, I learned to, like a lot of drag speeds, like with the sled, the rotator, like all that type of stuff, like spray speeds, the spray pattern, you know, like the pressure it needs to spray, all those bits and pieces, which I'm thankful to know now and to have the knowledge of it in my head. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to go out there and do a full prep myself. I could, I'd do pretty well, but again, only only doing it once, I wouldn't know that stuff. So, but yeah, having Justin here definitely helped a lot for for not only me but a couple of the other boys. Got a bit of info from him as well and bits and pieces. So, um, yeah, I think 
definitely, he knows what he's doing. That's, you know, that's the end of the end of it. He knows what he's doing and that's why he does it. A lot of guys, there's a, there's a, you'll see some traction meters that have a torque wrench attached and they'll stand two feet on them and that stuff doesn't work with Raider because we actually use so much glue. Um, you know it's ready by sight, like you, you'll get a, in different compounds, the guys here use PJ and then I've trained in both, PJ and VP, both products. Both great products and I believe that every track in the world should have both. Um, but look, it's one of those things you can tell by sight. So you can look at the track, you can look at the surface and know if it looks right. Um, and then obviously the feel under the foot. And you might notice that I'll, I'll sometimes put my fingers down and actually feel the surface. That's just feeling to see if the glue's gone off. So we've got to be very careful with weather. If it gets cold, if you overspray it, you've got to leave the cars parked for a little bit before they go on it because the glue's just too wet. So it's basically by feel, it's by sight. Um, under the foot doesn't lie. I mean, if your shoe sticks and you walk out of your shoe, it's gangster, it's ready to go. There's a lot of guys, you know, that have been doing it for years and years and years and probably far superior at the slick side of things than myself. Um, the craft I wanted to learn was obviously radial. Uh, and it's a lot different to what those guys are used to. Like typically you'll see they'll just rub and spray it once before the meeting and then, and then send it for the whole meeting. Nine times out of 10, that's probably okay for a big slick style car. Um, but look, there's little things that we always pick up from each other. Different tracks, there's some smart guys that prep tracks, you know, be it Sydney, Willow Bank, you know, the boys here. There's little things that pick up and, and we always bounce off each other and, and that's what this is about. It's, it's not about coming in and beating your chest to say that I know everything and I'm the best in, the, in Australia prepping a track. That's far from the truth. And I'd much rather come in and, and make the guys feel as a team. We work together to get an end result. And if we can learn snippets off each other, whatever it may be, like simple cleanup methods on the start line, whether you use ash, whether you don't use ash, whether you scrub it, whether you, whether you wash it first, you know, there's lots of things. I mean, one big thing that we learnt in the early days from Kurt was you can never wash a race surface enough. And you'll notice that every morning, the very first thing we do before we even touch anything is wash the track. Uh, once again, you don't know what's happened overnight. If they've had a shower of rain, if there's been a bit of fallout from, you know, industry around here. I know there's some industry around here. When I first got here Wednesday, there was a lot of fallout on the track. Um, it, it took like two or three good washes to make the track ready to even rub because you know, same thing, it's not being lazy, it's, it's not that at all. It's just not knowing that the, you know, before you put glue or rubber track, you don't want stuff under that. So if you can get all that off first before you start putting your layers on, it's a better result. So coming into tracks is hard. I mean, you've got, you've got the guys that have been doing it for years, like I said, and they, they're probably, in most cases, could be more superior at doing a slick track than myself. Um, and it's always like, you don't want to put a, you don't want to put like a board or a fence up. It's, it's, hey guys, we're here to work together. Um, I don't know everything, that's, that's for sure, you know, but we spent the money and we, we got the right guys over to try and learn as much as we can and sponge as much info as we can out of them. And, and if I can pass some of that knowledge onto the tracks around Australia and, and vice versa, if I visit different venues and I grab snippets from each track, happy days, the, the end result is the races benefit, the crowd benefits because they're seeing cars go down. There's nothing worse than a, than a meeting where cars don't go down. So, and that's just great for the sport. And that's that's the end goal is to, to keep drag racing good. And that's the end, end result what we want. I'm Brendan Franklin, owner of Because Race Car. Been going to the drag since I was a little kid back in the Ravenswood days, um, going with the family. And from then, um, when the motorplex opened, obviously we started going there. So I've been a spectator, I've been crew, and then for the last few years I've started filming the cars, I guess. Um, something I've always had a passion for on the side, but thought I'd give it a go down at the track. There wasn't, um, wasn't many people doing it at the time, so it's actually turned out pretty well. Um, Keeps him busy. It's definitely a massive amount of work that um, goes into it behind the scenes. Um, started following the radial cars pretty early on. A close family uh, friends that race one of the radial cars down there, um, and they're the you know family we've been going to the drags with since back in the Ravenswood days um, with Ben's old man Peter. So I've been following radial yeah for pretty much the whole time now, and branched into the other categories I guess to um, you know change the videos up a little bit. Had a pretty good um, 
yeah, uptake of, of all the content going up, which is, which is always good, but um, yeah, definitely got a passion for the radial stuff. Yeah, I was pretty keen when um, Lorenzo got a hold of me and let me know that um, the plan for the, the radial prep, which was awesome because, um, yeah, it's been, it's been tough trying to, trying to film, I guess, a lot of the radial track highs that we've had and, you know, the cars struggling to get down the track. Um, not all the time, but um, a lot of the time, I guess. So it was definitely uh, pretty exciting to hear that we were going to get a track, I guess, that um, we'd have a pretty good chance of getting these cars down. As the boys have already said in the video, there's you know, nothing worse, I guess, than, than you know, whether it's driving the car, I guess, or crewing or watching or even filming, uh, watching the car just struggle to get down. It um, makes it hard, I guess, to make a, a decent video out of it. And I think you know one of the rounds. It was it was such a tricky day with the track. Um, I ended up just making a, a video just on power skids essentially, <laughs> which you know people still watch. But I'd rather see the cars go fast and uh, hook up. It's um, it's a pretty good feeling, especially when I'm right behind the car on the start line and they actually get out past the 60 and you hear the power start coming in. It's um, yeah. It's gonna be, you know it's going to be on and uh, all i got to do is keep the camera pointed in the right direction and follow the car down the track and wait for that number to show up on the board and see if I can spin around quick enough to get the boys reaction uh, and the girls um, yeah when it's when it's actually had a, a decent hit and made a made a killer pass and more than likely um, grabbed a PB yeah I mentioned before that I've actually got a no prep car so it's it's called kryptonite it's a HT GDS Monaro 615 with three kits um, I just recently did the No Prep Kings thing and um, race Jeff Lutz can't comment what happened until it comes out on TV, but um, let's say we were in front of him. I'll just leave it there. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a purpose-built No Prep car, that's what it was, and it's funny when I unveiled that car, all the radial boys obviously on the East Coast are like, oh, you're crazy, I'd never run that car down the, you know, down a track with no glue, you know, because they're all so used to having such a perfect surface. But, you know, what do you know, a TV show comes and we've got no prep cars everywhere. So once again, but that's good for the sport. So I've always been a slick racer. I've driven radial cars. Um, I have driven radial car and, and been fast. Radials are faster, there's no doubt about it, because the sidewall just does not absorb so much power. So yeah, look, I don't think I'll ever put radials on my car because I can't run my own meetings. The meetings have grown. We get anywhere from 130 to, to 180 entrants. So, Having to manage a meeting and, and promote it and do the track prep myself, there's no way I could actually race my car. So it's a shame, but it's okay, I get it. There's opportunity to race my car elsewhere, and that's why I've left it a slick car. So when the opportunity comes, I can just jump in the seat of that baby and let her eat. So, so this video stuff, pretty much self-taught. Um, you know, you watched a couple of YouTube videos here and there, been watching YouTube for a long time, you know, for different ideas, how other people are doing it. But um, essentially, I've pretty much taught myself how to do what I'm doing, doing it my own, you know, unique way. Um, some people might hate it, um, but I probably wouldn't do it if I didn't do it the way I do, because I enjoy doing it that way, even though, you know, it's a lot of work. It's, it's a huge amount of work behind the scenes to, to put these videos together, not just, you know, what the time I spend down the track. There's days, if not weeks, um, behind the scenes editing, just making these videos as good as I can make them, I guess. Um, and I'm always trying to push myself to make each one better than the last one, I guess. Try different things and, you know, there's only so many angles you can, I guess, film the cars from down the track and I think I've just about found them all. So always trying to, trying to do something different, trying to, you know, find a different angle or different view or, you know, do a close up of something that, you know, people sitting in the grandstands might not be able to see. And um, I think that you know the people racing enjoy watching my videos. They get to see things that um, they obviously can't see when they're in the car. Um, see the crew's reaction. If I can you know grab it quick enough before they are uh, they've all jumped up in the air before the board's just about lit up. So I want to catch that first, then spin around and you know grab their reaction. So um, sometimes I get lucky. I can get that get that on film. So yeah, it's pretty. Uh, Pretty excited when I heard about um, this track hire coming up. I've known Lorenzo for for a few years now. Um, obviously, Lorenzo's been on our channel a whole bunch. Um, missed his VL back in the day. Um, it's pretty much just been the um, Fox body now. So we did the reveal for that one. 
done all the, you know, all the track eye videos and the radial rounds that that car's been in. Um, seen it go down pretty quick, but you know, watching videos that the boys have put up from from over east, it's got plenty more in it. You can just see it from you know what the tracks are like over there. So pretty keen to see see his car get down um, on the track, you know, over here. I guess after we've you know spent spent three days prepping, I guess. So it was a bit of work, obviously trying to uh, get organised for this this track prep. Um, I actually had to come back from a holiday early. We were actually on leave when I got um, got told the date, so that was already booked. So I came back early for that, and um, I was down there helping helping the boys out for well, it would have been two days. I think the first day was supposed the first night was supposed to go down. It actually got rained out, so I went down there. Uh, it was a no go. Um, pretty much, yeah. Didn't get much done, just had a quick look around and then a um, bit of a plan for what was going to be on the next two days. And then, yeah, straight back down to the next morning. Um, on the way, I actually picked up the PTO shaft, as Lorenzo mentioned, for the rotator and then straight into it. Um, first time, obviously, I'd ever seen you know, a rotator for starters um, in, in, our, in our track and uh, how the track is actually prepped. So I was pretty, pretty keen to, to meet Justin, heard a lot of good things about him, um, definitely knows his stuff and was hoping to learn and did learn um, a whole bunch about you know, what, a, what a track can actually do when you put some time into it, I guess. Um, so I learnt a lot, followed the boys around uh, for, for the two days of prepping, I guess, um, and you know, I jumped on the tools where I could to help them out give them a bit of a hand because um, it's a lot of work for just a couple of people and plenty of other people came down as well and uh, helped out too which is awesome to see. Um, so yeah pretty much filmed as much as I could. Um, pretty much had cameras on everything I could put them on um, and yeah huge amount of content to go through and edit but definitely worth it. I don't think anything's been been done like this um, in terms of this style of video um, on a track prep I guess before so I was pretty keen to, to jump on the um, the idea and already had some you know some things I wanted to be able to do in this video, which hopefully I've been able to do. Um, and yeah, make it make it a pretty big deal, I guess, because it, it's a big deal for us. And yeah, because nothing like this is, that I've seen has been done um, on YouTube or anywhere before that I've seen. So I want to make it something that people want to watch. Um, it's going to be a long video, but it's definitely got you know. It's got a lot of content in it that I think people will enjoy watching. Um, you know, a lot of people probably don't probably don't know what goes on in the way of track prep to get a track to to be at a level that radial cars are going to get down on. So you'll see how much work went in. Um, yeah, it's um, it was a, a big three days, I guess. And then obviously after the prep, straight into the racing. So same deal again. Had uh, had both both main cameras running now I guess and uh, tried to tried to grab all the passes I could grab. I don't think we missed any so there was a few crackers. Um, the Saturday was definitely better than the, the Friday. Um, you know, the, it, was, it was a lot of work that went in on the Thursday and even the Friday morning to get the track ready for Friday but um, as Justin said it's, it still, uh, still had a bit to go into it so Saturday was definitely the track, as the boys have already said, was on kill. Um, you know, it's PB after PB from so many different cars. Um, you know, one of the cars in particular, the uh, Oosterwalls um, Pontiac. Um, I've really wanted to see that car get down. I've filmed that so many times, and the boys pretty much have that car on kill from the get-go, as soon as they roll it off the trailer. So it's always, uh, you know, 50-50 chance of whether that thing's going to hook um, and that one pass where it actually got out past the 60 um, I knew it was on like it's probably the, the you know hardest I've seen that car launch but maybe one other one other pass I think that I've, I've got on video pre from a previous track I but that pass was absolutely yeah on fire it was it was hooking unfortunately the boys um, I think they said they cracked the cylinder or something on that pass so they, they shut it down maybe three quarter track, but oh, that would have been a number for sure. That That's a serious car. And uh, it's probably one of the best sounding cars on the, on the channel, I think I've said that before. I don't know if that's the titanium exhaust on it or what, but it's just ridiculous. It's um, it's an absolute animal, so 
it was awesome to see that thing hook. Um, and a few other, you know, a few other cars. Kevin was going for a six in the Trans Am. Um, not through lack of trying, he didn't, he didn't quite get there, but he was back to where he, you know, where he wanted to be, I guess, so he was happy. And, you know, from, from the feedback from everyone else down there, everyone was pretty happy with, um, yeah, I guess the, the results of the weekend. Um, yeah. So yeah, feedback on the, on the event, obviously we did Friday night and Saturday night. Um, Friday night, the track struggled early. It always is going to, being a fresh, fresh prep track and all that, it does come around slowly, but um, by the end of the night it was pretty good. It, it was definitely better than what we've had here in the past, in the last few years. Um, and then, so people, some people only race Friday night and Saturday, but uh, sorry, Friday night and not the Saturday, but a lot of people in the end of it ended up coming back Saturday because they obviously seen what, what was there and what was gonna be there the next day. Um, but overall, Friday night was good, Saturday was awesome, like off the charts awesome when it came, that, that by the end, you know, the last four hours of that, that night, that track was, you know, on kill and it showed a lot of PBs went down, a lot of cars went quick in the 60. Um, I didn't see one racer that wasn't happy about the night, about the whole weekend. Um, everyone enjoyed it. The whole start line atmosphere with everybody out there, like crews and stuff like that, even you know, even other drivers coming out and watching. I, I unfortunately broke the car early in early Saturday, so I didn't really have a lot to do but to hang around and, and watch, which I'm actually privileged to be able to do because it was a it was a good afternoon. Like it was a good afternoon and night. Like I, I enjoyed standing out in the start line and you know helping Justin plus watching cars PB go quicker. Um, you know what I mean like it's good to see those cars that have been in Perth for a couple of years now running back to back on our normal national events or whatever, be able to go out there and, and put PB down and you know PB up to PB and you know what I mean? And even the tuner side, like the, with the tuners and all that, they're all you know, a lot happier because they can actually start to use what they've got instead of taming them down and making them go A to B. You know, we can actually start doing what we have to do with them. And, and the cars show, like, I don't think there was one car there both nights that didn't, didn't do well and didn't PB and stuff like that, so. I'm pretty much um, a one-man band. Um, this is a side gig, I guess. Got another side gig as well. We do wraps, car wraps, graphics, um, pretty much anything vinyl-related. Uh, stickers, obviously. Um, so this and that business take up a lot of time. Um, got a family as well, so that you know I've got, I've got to try and balance everything and a full-time job as well. So um, it's full on. A lot of the a lot of the time I spend trying to edit after uh, after work, I guess. Um, not much else to do where I, where I'm working. Um, so yeah, it's just just hours and hours to try and try and get these videos wrapped up. Um, yeah. Probably one of the most challenging things I think for me um, with making these videos is honestly trying to get the music right. A lot of people, you see comments on the videos that they, they don't like the music, but um, spend a lot of time, even hours sometimes, um, trying to get the, the soundtracks right. I think it really makes the, the, the difference for the video. Um, I'm not sure if some people don't want any music at all, but. It'd be pretty boring watching, you know, in between all the racing with, with no music and just silence, I guess. Even the background noise would be boring, so try and, try and make it interesting by, you know, putting some effort into picking the right tracks, which I think, you know, work for the video. There's no point, you know, putting classical music. It doesn't, it doesn't fit, but try and, uh, yeah, try and fit, fit the music to what, what, you know, what I'm trying to show, I guess. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of time in, in making sure that that is right and obviously, you know, huge amount of effort and time into syncing all the clips to match that music perfect. People, you know, some people might just throw the music on and just chop the clips up wherever, but I go to the extra effort, I guess, of, of making that work, I guess, every time there's a transition in the music. I make sure it matches with the video. Sometimes it's not easy, but I play around the video a fair bit to make it all work, but the end, the end product, I think, speaks for itself. It's, it's, you know, I'm happy with what I'm putting out. Um, and I wouldn't release it unless I was happy with it, so it's worth the effort. So I pretty much, you know, only, only filmed over here. Um, only really watch drag racing over here in person. Watch plenty online, you know, from over east and from America. But, you know, I'd love it. we had plans to head over to um, America for drag week with a few of the radio boys here, but um, yeah, COVID happened and a few other things and it just, 
just haven't been able to get there though. They ended up going over last year, which was awesome, but um, hopefully I'll get there. Um, I would like to go over east, Justin, if you're uh, paying attention. Happy to come over and help with some filming over there if you want. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just time um, and money obviously, but time more than anything. Um, trying to squeeze it all in to, to get over there. Um, at the moment, content wise, I'm, I'm backed up to probably December, I think, trying to really get into it and catch up. Um, as soon as I added that, that deep end camera, it pretty much tripled the workload, I've, I've realised. Uh, but it's worth it, like hearing the cars come at that camera, full noise, I think, you know, for the extra, and that's a lot of extra uh, effort involved. I think, I think people will like it. Um, and it's just going to take a bit longer, but I'm happy to do it. It's, um, yeah, I think it's worth it. Um, but yeah, hopefully try and try and catch up. I'll, you know, obviously spent a lot of time on this this video, um, and it's, you know, shortly the uh, the actual track, you know, track hire side of it with all the cars, private test day on the track, uh, will be out shortly. So keep an eye out for those. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Future plan, plans for WA. I think. I will, we will do, I have spoken to Justin about it and I have talked to Sharpie about it, I think we will do another couple of these test days with Justin coming here. Um, Justin's keen to do it, obviously I just got to, you know I mean, the numbers and stuff like that are obviously what's critical and the weather, um, it has to be at the right time of the year obviously, so I think probably early season, end of season again, like maybe like we did this year, we'll probably do again, um, but yeah, time will tell, hopefully we can make something work, you know, like, um, later on in the year, this year, I'd, I'd say. And then, um, and then yeah, we'll just go from there. But definitely, definitely plans to do it again. I think it was, it was a good weekend. Everyone benefited benefit from it. So I think I'm definitely gonna try to do it again. Um, and then we'll just see what, what it brings, I guess, in the future with Justin and stuff like that coming here. So he's keen to do it, I'm keen to do it. So I'll continue to do it for, you know, the next 12 months or if not longer, and just see what happens out of it. Maybe one day it could bring a radio event here, but, Again, it comes down to numbers. Um, it's a long, it's a long travel from east to here with you know some of the bigger hitters and stuff like that. If there was to ever be a Kenda around here, but um, I'm sure if it was put on, a lot of them would probably do it. Um, a few of us put the effort in to go there, and that's again July this year. I think there's six or seven cars from WA heading over to to New South Wales, Sydney to run the Kenda the Kenda around there. So I think that would be a pretty cool thing to be able to do that bit of a WA invasion. So hopefully that, you know, if we're travelling that way, they might do the same and, you know, return the favour and come travel this way and maybe we can hold around over here. So we'll see. Time will tell. I don't think so. I think you got it. I think you got everything covered though. Yeah.